Today I'd like to give you a brief overview of one of our databases that's called Scopus. You can find Scopus from the Hardin Library website by scrolling down until you see popular resources. On the right hand side you'll see a link for Scopus. Now before I start searching, I'm going to open up this drop down menu for limits. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to show you all the different types of documents that you'll find when you search Scopus. So in addition to articles, you'll also find books or book chapters, and you'll also find conference papers or conference reviews. And this is one of the reasons why Scopus can be very useful. If you're looking for what's known as gray literature, and that's anything that hasn't officially been published, Scopus will automatically search for those type of documents in addition to peer-reviewed scholarly journals. Now one thing about Scopus that I want to point out is while this is a database, Scopus does not offer any type of controlled vocabulary. And this is very important to keep in mind when you decide what database or databases you want to search for a particular project. I would recommend that PubMed be the first database that you go to. Again, while you're here at the University of Iowa, you have access to PubMed. You have access to all the, all the articles that you find in PubMed, uh, whether through our electronic journal subscriptions or through interlibrary loan. And the same can be said for any of our other databases as well. But after searching PubMed, if you want to search an additional database and you have specific needs, maybe you are looking for great literature, Scopus is a great database to search. And so what I like to do is just talk about some of the features in Scopus. Um, this isn't going to be a comprehensive tutorial, but I'm just going to talk about the basic things that I think you need to know uh, for this particular class. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to point out the different methods that you have available to you for searching. And by default, documents is selected. And this is what we'll use to search for uh, articles. You can also search by author and you can also search uh, by affiliation. There's also an advanced search feature, but to be honest, um, you're not really going to use that unless you decide to do a systematic review in the future. And Scopus is one of the databases that um, you're going to use to search. By default, uh, you're going to be searching for article title, abstracts, and keywords. You can change that at any time, but really this default is the best way to search. Notice how underneath the, uh, the search box you have an example. So you see cognitive architectures is surrounded by quotes, followed by the Boolean operator and, and then robots. The reason that this is surrounded by quotes is because it contains more than one term. So if you were to type in, for example, a search for influenza vaccine and seniors and you didn't put influenza vaccine in quotes, Scopus will search it as influenza and vaccines and seniors. But what I'm looking for is I'm looking for influenza vaccine. I want that searched as a phrase. So in Scopus, what I'll need to do is surround that in quotes. And this is one of the features that makes Scopus a little unique from the other database. So it's very important you use quotes for any topic that contains more than one word. Okay, so here's my search. And again, I put influenza vaccine in quotes. And I'm gonna go ahead and search. And notice here, it tells me how Scopus broke down the search. And again, it searched influenza vaccine as the phrase, which is what I was looking for. So here I have my uh, search results. And here I have my options, what I'd like to do with the search results. So for example, if I select all, I can export them uh, into EndNote. I can download them, and I have all these other options here. So here's an example of a citation record. And notice how you have the UI link for every citation. 
if I want, I can view or I can hide the abstract. I can look for related documents. I have author information here and additional citation information here. One of the features that makes Scopus unique is on the extreme right hand side of any record, there's a number. And this number tells me how many times was this particular article cited after it's been published. So this particular article here was cited four times. If I click on the number, I automatically get the individual records for all four of those citations that cited that particular article after it was published. And this can be incredibly useful. Over here we have our filters. Some of the filters are very similar to a lot of our other databases, um, but there are two that I just want to point out. One of them is document type. So if you, for example, know that you're just searching for conference papers, you can go ahead and check that. And even before you make this selection, you know that 12 citations out of all the citations that have come up from the search are from conference papers. So this gives you an idea of all the different document types that are available to you. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on Scopus uh, here on the left. I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to do a new search for diabetes. Now I'm going to click on Scopus again. And the reason I'm doing this is every database has a search history that shows you the searches that you've done in the database throughout the day. And some search histories last longer than others. I'm not quite sure how long Scopus's search history lasts. One of the nice things about the search history is that you can click on the number of items found and immediately go back to that search result. So if you've been searching the database for a, a while or maybe several times during the day and you want to go back to a previous search, you can just go to the search history, find it, and click on the number of citations found as opposed to having to uh, recreate that original search. Also in the search history, you are able to combine your searches. And the way you can combine searches might be different from database to database. In the case of Scopus, you have some examples here. So you have to type in the number and then the Boolean operator. So for example, I know that I want to combine these two searches. So I type number one and number two. And I click the search button here. And again, I have my search results. So here's my first search and it's been combined with my second search. And the reason for these parentheses are, if you remember algebra, anything that's surrounded by parentheses is searched first. So Scopus searches this search first, then it searches this search, and then it combines the results. And I can click on the title of any article, and this takes me to the uh, abstract page. And here I have the basic citation information, I have the abstract. The nice thing about Scopus is any term that you've typed in that appears in the title of the abstract will automatically appear in yellow. Here I can view all 36 references that the author of this, uh, this uh, article cited. If I scroll down, I can look at index keywords. Now I want to point out that again, Scopus does not have any controlled vocabulary, but if an article in Scopus is also indexed in Embase, then you'll see the mTree medical terms listed here. And I do talk about Embase in another tutorial. If that article is indexed in PubMed, then you'll see the medical subject headings or MeSH terms listed as well. And I do give a lecture on, on PubMed and I talk about MeSH. These are not hyperlinks, so you can't really do anything with these. But if you were to pull up this article in PubMed or in Embase, then these terms would be hyperlinked and you could use them to find more articles uh, that have these terms indexed. And if you scroll down, you get funding details. Here's my list of references, and I can click on any of these titles, and it takes me to the abstract page for that particular reference.
And then if someone has cited this article, you'll find that information here on the right. So for example, this has been cited uh, by one document, so I can click here to get that, that document information. And then this is just another way to access the bibliography. And I can click this link here to view all 36 citations. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Scopus again. And what I'd like to show you is I would like to show you how to search by author. And here I can enter in the author name. If you know the affiliation, I would definitely recommend entering that in as well. If you know the author's ORCID ID number, then that's all you have to enter. But in this case, I'm just going to enter in um, the author's last name, the author's first name, and their affiliation, and click search. So here I have the author's information listed. I have their name, how many documents are found in Scopus. I should point out when you search for an individual author um, in our, date, our different databases, sometimes the number of citations that appear in one database might be more or less than another. And that all just depends on how many citations by a particular author has been entered into a particular database. So just keep that in mind. Now, sometimes you might get more than one option for the same author, and then you can just go ahead and select all the different options and you can click request to merge authors and then uh, all your selections uh, will appear at once but in this case we just have this one option here and so you can highlight it here or you can just click on the author's name and then this is uh, specific information about the author and really the only information i wanted to point out is here you have access to all seven documents. You can see all the five documents that cited the seven that the author published. You also have the authors, uh, 18 co-authors, and the topics uh, that the author has published under. And I'm going to click on Scopus again just to go back to the home page. That's really all I wanted to say about this database. Um, there's nothing wrong with searching Scopus, but again, it's very important to remember that Scopus does not have any type of controlled vocabulary, so please keep that in mind. Um, that is why I consider Scopus a secondary database. So uh, if after searching a database like PubMed and maybe several others, if you're interested in also looking for great literature, uh, Scopus is a great database to search. If you just wanna see how many times an article that you found that was maybe published a few years ago has been cited, then Scopus is definitely the database to go to for that. Remember that there isn't any type of controlled vocabulary, which is kind of unusual for most of the databases uh, that we do offer.